Good afternoon. This webinar is about overcoming digital disruptions with Esfahana Innovations. This is the agenda of the day. Assumptions in the audience. The digital transformation question is done and dusted. Paths taken by enterprise in their digital transformation journey. What are enterprises in their digitization journey? Where are they now? What they should do? Why is s hana the right choice? Why s hana for finance? Factors for consideration and adoption methods. This webinar is uh, for a period of about 40 minutes or 45, and then we probably will have some questions, if there are any. The questions for which answers are already known is why are established enterprises digitally being disrupted? So these questions are already answered. So there is no question that's left open in the sense that why should an enterprise be digitally disrupted? Why should an organization be digitally transformed? Or is digital transformation with s the right choice? Since most of us here are from an SAP install base, we all understand that uh, the first choice option probably would be s when we look at uh, digitizing the core. But the question itself about digitization is already probably long done and dusted. So enterprises already are very, very aware that if they don't digitize elements within their enterprise, whether it is part of the core or whether it is part of the edge, they have to start that and many of them have already started. We've already seen in our experience also within our own customer base that many of our own customers have started this journey a couple of years ago. Some, some of them have started this at least three to four years ago and we've seen the benefits that these customers have undergone and, and, and parts of the enterprise that have been transformed as well. So we know the benefits of this so I'm not going to go too much into the question of why digital, but then how to get there, where are enterprises currently stuck, what are the most possible options, and how s helps in being one of the preferred options, at least for the SAP install base. I'll try and put my effort in that direction today. So what are the paths enterprises are taking in their digital transformation journey? Today, we'll probably be discussing about two options, what we call, call as the core to edge and edge to core option. So typically, when we started this journey about a couple of years ago, there was a lot of discussion about doing the core first. So there was quite some understanding about how Core to edge could also be done in the first place. Digitizing your core first. Core processes include finance, logistics. It's, it's rather effort intensive. These were all the questions that were uh, at least up for grabs when we started with the core to edge discussion. Then people started realizing that it is not so much. And when, when core to edge became a more, more difficult option because smaller enterprises would then go over to ERPs on the cloud and those kinds of things. But that is really not an option for the larger enterprises. When the edge to core concept started evolving and moved very rapidly also within the SAP ecosystem. So what happened was the edge started getting digitized first. So where I, what I mean by edge is processes around uh, CRM, performance management, recruitment, learning, uh, a part of consolidation maybe things like this, they started getting digitized first before the core was touched. And this process already began at least about four years ago in the markets that we operate. And there we could see a lot of these uh, transformation journeys already beginning to do. And we also realized that the effort was much, much lesser when they wanted to do with the digitization of the edge and also connecting back to the core was, uh, Although a little more complicated at the beginning with things becoming more easier at the core with more of the enhancement facts coming in, 
but still we were away from the digitized core because the digitized core would then give you a microservices architecture which was not possible within ECC. ECC still had a lot of limitations with that and only so much could be done uh, when it came to uh, connecting success factors, for example, to, to ECC on-prem or when it came to connecting C4C or, or any part of the hybrid ecosystem or, or also things like Workday, for example. I, we have a lot of customers who have uh, Workday, for example, and Blackline and those kinds of things. So that was already getting difficult. I, I Towards the, the later half of the presentation, I would be discussing a use case that we went recently through where it was a very heterogeneous landscape. So the point was the, the edge started getting digitized much, much more faster than the core, and the core took a back seat. So that is where most of the enterprises are, are currently there. So that is also the path most of the enterprises are taking these days. So even the ones who are now starting to go with that transformation are looking at the edge first because those are much more quicker areas where they could be uh, digitizing first. So where are enterprises in their journey currently? So typically, this is what we see. We are, we are beginning to look at a, at a landscape like this where we have a non-digitized core. We have some parts of, of vendor management out there, uh, business planning, some bits of e-commerce, maybe some part of compliance already, compliance reporting, regulatory compliance stuff, CRM. Uh, that went to the cloud a long, long time ago. Learning management, performance, these are much more recent enhancements that have come up. Uh, and there's a lot of push in, in getting to that point. In some places, we also have some parts of the analytics on the cloud, although it's a much more difficult option. But then uh, we have examples and case studies where we also have some analytics in the cloud and consolidation. Consolidation being on the cloud is also a very recent phenomenon. But then uh, we have our one of our use cases as well where consolidation takes place outside because of a very uh, non-linear core that they had. So, or at least uh, the current ECC that we have uh, gives us too much of flexibility. Uh, I will discuss that as well. So that was also a problem when it came to consolidation. So we are beginning to see uh, a landscape like this where enterprises is beginning start beginning to see this way, you know. So that is that is where we are. And this process is is not so complete as well. So we can see here that enterprises are somewhere between their 20 to 40 or 50 percent of this journey itself. And that is where the realization sets in that when you go full steam in trying to digitize the edge, you start having problems when you start connecting back to a non-digitized core. And that was already getting difficult for customers at that point. And this is precisely where customers are today, where they have maybe 20, 30, or in some cases, 50, 60% of the edge already digitized, and they have a non-digital core or uh, a core that is not so intelligent like what SAP is, for example, with Esfahana. So now coming back, where are enterprises in their journey today? Uh, the preferred option, of course, is the edge to core approach. Most of the enterprises, like what I said, are somewhere in, in that 20 to 50 percent of their edge digitization cycle. And that is where the, the pain starts kicking in when they want to further digitize the edge. They already see difficulties in connecting back to a uh, non-digitized core and that is where the problem starts getting bigger and they also see that the effort i mean this was a very one use case that we have with a customer in the uk where uh, the effort of actually connecting the edge back to the core uh, in one specific case at least was actually uh, more than the cost of the edge itself or digitizing the edge itself. So that was a very unique case. So the customer couldn't understand why it was uh, taking so much of effort to connect back to an ECC system uh, that they had. And uh, yes, that was on an older EHP version. And that was very difficult to connect uh, uh, a scanning system out there 
with real time data flowing in so that was that was already getting very difficult because ecc didn't have the microservices architecture fully deployed in, in the announcement pack there uh, the other option was to do a lot of work within the ecc area itself so so these are areas where customers typically get stuck as well now uh, customers are at crossroads here so they are left with uh, a decision to go ahead and start digitizing the core uh, and start moving things in parallel between edge and core so that is where they are currently so and also we also see that digitization has to be done at an optimal cost uh, to be able to provide better value to the enterprise without actually incurring too much of license cost i'll come back to this discussion uh, a bit later here in this in this presentation because when you think of doing this the options before at least the as a install base are 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 uh, two or three options that we have uh, we we were beginning to see a lot more of the of the conversions that are uh, being keen with customers at least because to do a new implementation again is is, is a lot more effort than it was originally thought so again that so this means that further digitization of the edge is not possible without the core getting digitized in the first place so customers here really are at a crossroads where they have to get back to digitizing the core so this is what we already discussed now so we come back to the bigger question of what should enterprises do now in their in their current journey now here we start seeing that digitization of the core is now a need rather than a nice to have so we have reached a point with most customers agreeing or at least coming to understand that the core has to be digitized and and the process of doing that is 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 uh, sometimes more difficult than they originally thought or there are better options that sap is proposing these days so what does digitization of core mean like what i already told you this was this is at least in the current context of what where we are it is more about having a microservices embedded architecture where data is seamlessly uh, exchanged between core and edge not necessarily replicated between the two because that gives a unique set of problems by itself so the best way of digitizing the core is to have an architecture that seamlessly exchanges data but not replicates it uh, and also a core that is fully transformed when it comes to machine learning when it comes to artificial intelligence for example when it comes to a little bit of predictive analytics things like this these are all beginning to take shape and form within the core itself so that is these were actually considered to be difficult uh, to be integrated within the core initially when this journey started but then sap has started integrating most of these libraries into the core itself thanks to the development of s for hana sap is now able to push a lot more of the functions that are packed in that was previously available only on the sap cloud platform for example and all of that is, is now beginning to be available on the on the latest versions of 1709 now postmodern erp in addition to being built on microservice architecture also allows for seamless integration between the edge and the core so that's precisely what we are now talking about and this gives us so much more flexibility today in in digitizing the edge itself because the when 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 the core is is uh, connected seamlessly to your edge applications it also means that digitization of the edge can go much much more faster and you can have much more of your open ended applications moving very very quickly to the cloud itself now enterprises must look quickly before moving towards the path of the edge of digitization so this is also a, a, a very essential criteria where they have to look deeply into the core to see what kind of processes they want to change as they move to a newer core or in some cases we have seen that the business has not 
actually changed so much, but it's only uh, probably vastly increased in terms of spread and volume, but the process itself is not changed. But in other cases, we also see that uh, ECC implemented maybe 12, 15 years ago is, is really not relevant anymore. Too much of customization, too much of custom development. We've seen all of these use cases. So uh, that itself needs to have uh, a complete uh, change in some cases. But then again, the question is which way to go? To achieve 100% of digitization of the edge, digitization of the core is a mandatory thing to do today. So that we are, we are, we are enterprises are, are beginning to be aware of this, that they cannot proceed very quickly with the digitization of the edge without touching the core itself. Digitization of your core is updating your core ERP system with a postmodern ERP like S4 HANA. Now, this is the biggest challenge that customers are facing today on how to get to this point. The realization is there, they understand the need, uh, but how to get there is, is the biggest question. And what is the real business value that S4 HANA gives you? Now, having come to this point of understanding that you need to get your core to be digitized you need you most of the customers understand that yes we have to move on is it the right time the questions before them today are is it the right time do we wait for some more time for Eswahana to mature out or or are we being too late already do we start to get the benefits of Eswahana already or is Eswahana the right choice at all should we wait for a couple of years with ECC Will it evolve more? There are so much of questions within the installed base of S4HANA and also the big question about license. Now, that is a question that is not fully answered. I'll try to answer that a little bit uh, in, the, in, the, in the next of the slides. Now, this is the picture that we all are aware of that SAP uh, puts it in front of uh, all their material that the digital core of SAP S4 HANA is, is out there. It's ready across industries. Of course, not across all the industries. A lot of industries are getting added today, which is completely enabled with, the, with things like IoT, Copilot, uh, a lot around uh, multimodal devices, a lot about big data, analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, business networks, people, social networks, integration. So all of that is, is possible, yes. But now to what extent that's possible? Is that really relevant for, for the industries that we really know for the, uh, for the installed base? Maybe not all of them are, are really relevant. I, in, in our experiences, we have found some of the very relevant points of Esfahana. Uh, that we will discuss in the next slides. But this is what SAP offers you as, as, uh, as the futuristic version of, of its multi-year investment into s hana So this is probably the end state of what SAP envisages. Where are we actually today? We're, we're somewhere in this journey, we're probably both SAP and the install base is somewhere, I would say somewhere in the, in the 15 to 20% point. There's still a long way to go there. When we're looking at all of this, there are a lot more uh, algorithms, a lot more of the libraries that can still be added. But at the same time, we can see that the deployment of all of these, especially when it comes to machine learning or art artificial intelligence, the things with Copilot, the things with the Internet of Things, uh, these kinds of things, the IoT devices, Leonardo, all of that are, are really moving very quickly on the on the cloud platforms. Uh, and the code base being the same between Esfahana and the, uh, the, the, the the public cloud and also the SAP cloud platform. I think uh, it's only a matter of time before a lot of these are made available on the on-prem versions as well. Now, what we have tried to do is we have tried to build a small matrix here from our own experiences with our customers to build a business case for s hana So the question of why s hana should it be now? Uh, is there a licensing impact, for example? Things like this. We have, we have tried to bring it into a small uh, sheet here, at least for 
the important functions that we come across with with our customer base and i thought it would be very relevant to share it uh, with this group as well now if you look at uh, the pointers with universal general for example yes there is a huge impact uh, there is no license implications there the same goes for new general ledger new asset accounting uh, account based segmentation basically so this is something that uh, i think for people who have used uh, cost costing based copa will understand that that is no more relevant with esfahana so with esfahana it's completely account based uh, copa which uh, gives you so much of more flexibility for uh, segmentation itself when it comes to uh, reporting with copa so segmental analysis is much more powerful in esfahana new asset accounting is 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 really a, a nice piece of work i should say because if you remember in the old days with ecc uh, there was always differences between asset accounting and fi and ecc used to be very flexible with that now that is gone uh, so it is going to be one version of the truth i'll discuss this in the next slide the same goes for the new gl as well uh, there is uh, there is no more differences between uh, co and fi it's all completely going off into the universal journal so that's that's a huge improvement from where we are today with ecc as cash management as well uh, there is a separate uh, piece for esfahana cash management uh, there is a small downside here because if you look at ecc there are a couple of reports in ecc where we could use uh, some of the cash management but now that's gone into a new license package which is called esfahana cash management there is a license impact on that but it is completely integrated into the into the esfahana suite there is quite some uh, nice uh, machine learning stuff with that it looks at uh, your previous patterns and tries to make some invoice matching for cash management as well so each of these subjects uh, we will go into the future webinars we are planning a series of the webinars each of this is going to have a separate webinar to explain it more in detail because we thought that this list at least to start with would be a, a very good list for customers to spend more time on before they analyze uh, what would be the license impact what would be the real business impact and then come to a conclusion the same thing goes with spend analytics is is, is very nicely done uh, supplier performance management these things don't have a license impact embedded analytics is one of the major major improvements so that is completely within s for hana extended warehouse management which is part of apo again embedded ppds but again these two have a license impact it already had in the apo part a lot of fiori apps uh, of all the three types transactional apps uh, you also have the uh, application ones and the fact sheet ones so all of that are are quite enhanced i think with 1709 we have close to 7000 or 8000 of them already deployed we also have a list of wow apps there what we have deployed for one of our customers so that is uh, is also a very very new thing and it doesn't have any license impact you also have transportation management in 1709 uh, and that is having a license impact yes but then it is integrated into the esfahana suite you also have financial consolidation you also have business planning ibp as well so all of this is now part of the esfahana uh, suite which was uh, typically in different systems so if you look at this is uh, at this list at least you could you could safely rule out a couple of instances where we had srm in the past for example where we had apo where we had bpc where we had bibw so at least these four applications are completely gone now so all of this can now safely be integrated back into the core and we all know from our past experiences how difficult it was when we had a landscape that was ecc connected with srm with apo with bpc and with bipo bibw and we used to have uh, either pi in between or we used to have rfc layers in between so that was a real uh, complex landscape that we used to have in the past so that is one of the major drivers for customers to to look at us for hana itself 
where uh, a lot of this is integrated. But again, from a licensing standpoint, uh, they are still different. In some cases, they are very different, uh, like the cash uh, management scenario. But in other cases, for example, if you look at embedded analytics and some parts of the erstwhile SRM suite, I think they're already in there. Uh, and there is no license impact as well. But some of the other parts of APO, uh, they are in, but there is a license impact and transportation management is, is very new. There are some parts of transportation management uh, already outside, but then to have an integrated scenario in one single system, to have your entire supply chain uh, planning, uh, advanced planning, manufacturing, right up till uh, freight forwarding, transportation management, where you collaborate with all of your uh, transportation stakeholders, all of that is now embedded into the core itself. So that's one huge advantage of, of Esfahana 1709. Let me repeat again. So each of these topics would be covered in future uh, webinars. We're planning a series of these. This is just the first one where I'm just going through with the, the, the high level highlights of what we think are more important for customers uh, that we interact with. So these are probably the, the more important things that customers are looking for. Of course, there's a lot of other things, other areas of Esfahana itself where uh, customers are actually looking in more detail. Now, I want to touch upon one particular topic about uh, Esfahana for finance. Uh, this is not largely discussed out there as well. So I thought we should be putting this here so for better understanding of customers. So if you look at the ECC days, typically the financial uh, system is comprised of three distinct pillars, the FI uh, pillar, and then you have CO as a pillar, and then you have asset accounting as well. And typically what uh, ECC gave us was the flexibility to keep these slightly different. So, so that also meant that uh, every month and close was a problem because Typically, there was a difference between FI and CO or FI and AA, things like this. So there was always a problem between uh, asset accounting and FI or CO and FI. And uh, there was always this hassle at the end of the month of keeping these things in sync with all sorts of journal entries or, or consolidation was a mess. So uh, reconciliation was a very, very huge issue and that consumed a lot of month and time. Now. That is one of the biggest advantages with Esfahana for finance. Now, all of that is, is gone. Now it's completely merged on into one single version of truth called the Universal Journal. The Universal Journal basically has all of this in one particular, one complete comprehensive journal. So every FI uh, record, FICO or asset accounting completely goes into the Universal Journal. So the huge impact of this is in a very, very fast financial close. So the month end closing cockpit is, is really enhanced with, with a lot of Fiori applications as well. So if you look at 1709, closing cockpit is one of the major selling points of 1709, I would say, coupled with a universal journal, coupled with a faster financial close. I think that is something that customers have to really consider when they are looking at the number of days that they want to reduce when when for financial close and that's that's one of the major business impact points as well that we saw that in our in our customer place as well where this was really pitched very hard to our customers to the business particularly where sometimes the financial close takes anywhere between uh, seven to ten days and quarter closes even more so that was a very hard selling point as well Again, coming back to the same thing, so I, I discussed all of this in detail. I just wanted to pick up the financial part because that was one of the major selling points for Esfahan. I still continues to be the major selling point. And when you combine cash management and the rest of procurement as well, so that is uh, that's indeed quite some very interesting pieces of application that have been put together. Now, uh, there is one more very interesting piece of uh, uh metric that customers have to look at so i thought i should also be putting a case study in front about application rationalization i think we already discussed this so this is something that we uh, recently came across uh, with one of our customers so typically if you look at the picture on the left that was what it was 
so they had uh, ECC, they had Workday, and if you look at all the other side with with IBM Maximo and a lot of other third-party systems, they had uh, Factory Talk with, with the SQL Server. They also had SRM and some parts of Ariva, Blackline. They had SFDC, Kinexis, and they also had a Sidecar. A lot of this. Now this was this was also making life much more difficult for them to even manage a, such a heterogeneous landscape. You know, this is. This is typically also how things look like in a, in a customer place today where you have so much of heterogeneous applications. Now, when we look at converting some of them into or, or migrating them or subsuming them within Esfahana, that is the picture on the right that you see. As I earlier told you, you have pieces of, uh, of application that completely disappear, for example, SAP SRM, uh, BPC, uh, and also the BI BW, which is uh, so in some cases, it could be also called as a sidecar. Uh, things like this, and uh, also things like, in at least in this case, we're getting away with Kinexis, uh, Blackline, and Maximo, and all of that. So the idea was to merge everything on into Esfahana itself, uh, thereby bringing a lot of standard SAP stuff back into SAP Esfahana 1709. So the resulting piece of uh, application landscape would then be Esfahana with Workday, uh, with Ariba, with SFDC, uh, and maybe one or one more application. So typically an application rationalization is another very important point that you have to consider. So if you have a landscape, an application landscape of 12 or 12 or 13 or 15 components sometimes, now bringing that down into a manageable four to six is what you should be looking at from a futuristic standpoint and when you have a digitized core uh, completely enabled with with microservices architecture i think that is a very relevant business case as well considering the long-term impacts of of the of the amount that would be spent in maintaining uh, upgrading and also having a, uh, a consulting or a, or, a, or a workforce behind managing all of those applications as well. So the, the, the total cost of ownership drastically comes down. At least in this case, the total cost of ownership drastically comes down uh, from from this application rationalization itself. So this is a, a wonderful case study. Uh, in, in at least in this case, the customer chose to go uh, to Esfahana 1709. I thought I should also put in um, another slide for factors of consideration when you're looking at moving from ECC to Esfahana, because these are the factors that you have to consider when you're looking at the options of moving from ECC to Esfahana. So like I told you, if you already have a heterogenic application landscape, so that is a very important factor because that drives your entire TCO. If you have an ECC system, which is, uh, Probably you have ECC for about 10 years or under 10 years. If you have for more than 10 years, then I think you have already a problem because your most of your processes or your business itself could have been transformed. You could have undergone an M&A, for example, or a, or a, or a diversification or, or parts of the company would have merged or demerged. Things like this would happen. I mean, again, it could happen under 10 years as well, but the assumption just taking a baseline assumption by saying that anything with under 10 years, limitations of legal entities, because that could also be a, a standing factor when you're considering an option of either conversion or a new implementation. Why I say that is no limitation on number of legal entities is also because uh, we came across situations with customers where the legal entities were probably over the 100 and they had got some advice that if you have more than 100 legal entities, for example, then you have a problem with it and coupled with 10 years of data. So that's going to be a huge amount of data for to be uh, taken up for a conversion. You know, so that is, is, is a problem as well. Now, and also if you have a database size of, of under 3 TB, for example. So if you have your production database, if it's actually more than 4 terabytes or 5 terabytes, even till 4 is an, is, is an option, but then when it crosses, a certain threshold I put three here but when it cost, crosses a certain threshold it becomes a little bit difficult at least from a conversion standpoint then you have to really think of, of, of a new implementation the most important aspect is impact on business 
when it compares to a conversion or uh, a new implementation. So that is when you look at the impact on business is, is, is going to be huge when it comes to a new implementation. Conversion is not so much. Number of ERP users is less than about uh, 5,000. It should be 5,000. It's 500. That's a mistake. It should be 5,000. And the most important point is cutover. Uh, if you really can do the cutover within a weekend or little more than a weekend, or is it going to be more? So we have experience in this. Our case studies, we are trying to push it down uh, with a little more than a weekend, so about two and a half days. And the number of runs before production that you have to take when you look at a migration option. Now, these were some of the points that uh, we thought we should put, put this up during this webinar because these are also the, the kind of uh, factors that are being discussed with customers about uh, when it comes to migration or when it comes to a new implementation because customers are one is the decision itself and the second is the approach so the way i've done this is i've earlier discussed the why for s fahana the business case for s fahana and now we're discussing how to get there and when you talk about how to get there you have these factors for consideration and that is the list that you now see in front of you now again adoption methods I think I discussed it already in the last slide. So the adoption methods, primarily there are three. The earlier slide was about the factors. You have to consider when you choose one of the adoptions. Typically, the adoption method is a new implementation. So when you go back to those considering factors, if your factors say that uh, you have a huge landscape, you've been using SAP for 15 years, ECC for, or you moved from 4.6 and then ECC, five then ecc six so you've probably been using that system for maybe 15 years or or and then you have a database of about five six terabytes i don't think that's a good case for a system conversion so that would eventually mean that you would probably need to go a new implementation because your your business probably would have changed your your processes would have changed you could have have maybe your custom development is, is in a mess you would have uh, so much of custom data, custom objects, custom transactions that you might have to probably, you think that is a good time to rethink about doing up the whole thing again. But again, what you have to remember here is uh, in such cases, you probably are better off with option one or sometimes with option three, which is landscape transformation. Why I say option three of landscape transformation is the time and the impact on the business. Now, if the business is not ready for such a huge program again because in most of these cases these programs last anywhere between 18 to 36 months now that's a huge period when it comes uh, to the impact on business now if your business is not ready for for something like that but you still want to get uh, the benefits of Esfahana, then you have to look at the third option of landscape transformation or if you're ready or if you think that the business is, is, is capable of embarking on a new program, typically they are when they cross a certain threshold, which is which is what I drew the line as 10 years. So typically when a business crosses a 10 year period with an older ERP platform, I think they are they are sort of ready for uh, a new change. Uh, but then again, the impact on the business has to be considered, at least in our use case, they had about a 10 year old, 10 year old system. They still had a lot of uh, ECC data, typical large size with a lot of, uh, with about three terabytes of data, 5,000 odd users, all of this. So that was a very thin line that we had to take between new implementation and conversion. So eventually we went the conversion route. So that is, that is also why we picked up those factors with the line there saying that if you still have it in, in, in that mode, in the factors that I just mentioned the earlier slide, you could still make the conversion and we are doing one of them. So the system conversion is still a very viable option for customers who have uh, a system, an ECC system that's probably about eight, nine years old, less than about three terabytes of data, less than about 5,000 odd users. We could still manage to go live within uh, a downtime weekend, a little more than a downtime weekend, let's say about 50 to 56 hours little more than a downtime weekend of migration. With 1709, you could still get all the benefits of S4 without going in for a new implementation. So that is also one of the adoption methods that is readily available. And we are 
uh, we have enough experience doing that. I think in the next of the webinars, we'll be go probably going through details of each of these approaches as well. Uh, the new implementation approach, you don't need to have so much of detail because that is really a new implementation. Probably with the system conversion, we'll, we'll, we'll walk you through in one of the webinars that are scheduled later to get into a much more detailed standpoint of how a system conversion is done. Also, the landscape transformation itself. So these would come in the, in the following webinars. Now, this is a little bit about myself. Uh, I hope this was a little more informative from where you are and what you already know about S4, the, the business case for S4, the why of S4, and the, and the how to get there. So I, I concentrated only on the very high level topics of this, the why and the how. Of course, there are, I, I understand that there are a lot more of questions that are circulating around. I think our team here are more than capable of answering a lot of these questions for you because we're going through uh, a lot of implementations and some big sized conversions as well. So if you are keen on doing something like this, if you have more questions, please feel free to discuss it with, with us with me directly or with, with one of our team members, I think that would be uh, a very welcome thing to do. I think that's about it. I What I had for today, it was, I think I did about 45 minutes. I did plan for that. If you have more questions, you please, uh, you're, you're free to, to ask them now. We still have about 12, 13 minutes to go. So I can take maybe a couple of questions before the time ends. Uh, what your experience with uh, S4 Cloud Edition deployments are? Okay, yeah, our experience with uh, with S4 HANA Cloud, uh, the public cloud edition. Uh, yes, we have done it for ourselves. We have our S4 HANA public cloud running for our uh, the UK part of business. We have uh, we have we are beginning two implementations now with the S4 HANA public cloud in. Uh, for two US companies, uh, professional services companies. We're starting that uh, in the coming weeks. So our experience with Esfahana Public Cloud, at least for the, uh, for the US edition and the UK edition has been uh, quite good. So, uh, which means at the time that we started, we still had a lot of challenges when it came to uh, deploying a set of functions. At least that was two years ago when we started, but now, the, the cloud edition is matured so much. I think you have a lot of these functions that have uh, come up and being the same code page uh, with respect to the on-prem version. Uh, I think the, the cloud editions are, are, are much more uh, quicker to deploy. We've, we can probably do this at least for the ones that we're now starting. I think we have uh, a commitment of getting it done in 10 to 12 weeks, at least for the basic versions which is very much possible because it's it's uh, basically from the activate standpoint, it's, it is more uh, prescriptive. There's not much to do around custom development. Uh, so to get the basic versions up and running from from a professional services standpoint or also from a from a basic manufacturing standpoint, I think it's much more quicker, much more easier these days. And we have experience in doing the professional services one. I can share more information with you. The manufacturing one we haven't started yet, but from professional services standpoint, I think we have quite some good experience handling the, the S4 HANA public cloud. Okay, can we have, uh, yeah, I think we have to unmute them. Yes, certainly. So. I can have one more. I can have a couple of other questions as well. Okay, I think that's about what we have time for. Uh, please, if you have more questions, please come back to us. You have all the details out there. Thank you so much for attending. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.